Hello everyone, Michael O'Brien here, and today we're going to talk about why I think you're probably doing the frustration count wrong. Hello everyone, Michael O'Brien here, and welcome back to another episode of Advice for Magicians, where the goal is to help you to take your magic to the next level. In today's episode, I wanted to do another video talking about slights or moves that I see people do that I think that they might have not learned the correct way to do them. And I'm not even talking about just from like an execution standpoint, I'm more talking about like the way that it's performed. Uh, so in this video, the title is You're Doing It Wrong, The Frustration Count. I know that sounds a little negative, but really uh, the reason that I'm telling you guys this is because this is something that I've done for a long time and I want you to learn from my mistake so that you don't repeat the mistake as well. So for those of you who have no idea what the frustration count is, I'm going to explain it to you guys in just a moment. But first, if you haven't already done so, please make sure to go ahead and click the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell. That way you'll know every time I upload a new video. Also keep in mind that this channel is sponsored by you guys. So if you would like to support the channel for just $1 a month, you'll get access to a ton of awesome stuff, including tutorials, early access to videos, emojis, badges, and more. All that for just $1. All you have to do is click the join button and become a Mob Squad member. Uh, for all of my Mob Squad members already out there and for all of my subscribers out there, you guys are the reason I'm able to keep the channel going, so I really appreciate you. Thank you for all of the continued love and support. As of right now, making this video, we are almost at 100 Mob Squad members. We're only like two or three away, so if you guys would like to become the 100th member, I will give you guys, if you're the 100th member, I will give you a special prize. Um, at the end of one of these videos, I'll make an announcement or something and I'll give something away for you guys. Uh, just because I really appreciate all of the support. So, the frustration count is a method of uh, showing that all of the backs of the cards are the same. Maybe I'm holding a, a packet of cards that are like a rainbow pattern on the back or something. I can show the backs of the cards, right? And I can do this over and over again. and. It looks like I'm, I'm showing different cards, but I'm really showing the same back. So like if I did it with the face, right? Uh, the frustration count allows me to, even though I'm taking cards away, I can keep showing the card and it looks like it's the same card every time. This is how I see people performing the frustration count. And I'm going to explain why you should not do it this way. All right. So I have a packet of cards here. Okay. As you can see, whoop, sorry. Let me do that again without flashing. <laughs> All right, so I have a packet of cards here, and as you can see, they're black on the back, right? Every single card has a black back. You can see that they're different on the faces, of course, but the backs are always the same. You see it's black here, black here, black here, black here. Six or seven or eight or so, I don't know how many cards, with black backs. And then they roll into the presentation. So... Why is that wrong? Like they look like they did the move just fine, right? I'm not even talking about executing the move from like a actual, you know, technical standpoint. I'm talking about the fact that they are making such a move out of this move that it draws so much unnecessary heat to it. Look, notice how all of the backs are black. Why would you tell me that? Like why, why like people know, they, they get it. All you have to do is just say, look, I have a, I have a bunch of cards here, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna do something with these cards. Um, you could pick the four of diamonds, you could pick the eight of diamonds, the three of spades. It doesn't matter, uh, but you're gonna pick one of these cards in just a moment, okay? I just wanted to show you that they're all different and they're kind of jumbled up, no particular order. That's how I would do it. I would not draw attention to the fact that the cards are, you know, all, look, they're all the same color here, like, right? What you do is you subconsciously flash the black back as you go through and you're showing the cards and you're pattering, right? So my patter could have nothing to do with the trick. I could just be like, all right, I want to show you guys something, okay? We have just a selection of cards here. Um, out of curiosity, does anyone have a favorite card? You have a favorite card? What's your favorite card, sir? Six of, six of diamonds? Perfect. Let's go ahead and do something with the six of diamonds, right? And now you roll into the trick. So it doesn't have to necessarily have anything to do with what you're doing with the trick. But at the very least, if you are gonna have it focus on the cards, you don't wanna focus on what the frustration count is hiding, which is the fact that the backs are all different and you want them to think that they're the same, right? So um, 
even like even like if let's just say um, I wanted to do a trick and I wanted you to think that all of the cards were like the Queen of Spades, right? I wouldn't go, look, there's one queen, two queens, three queens, four queens. That just screams like you're doing something, right? So instead what I would do is something like this. All right, I'm going to show you guys a trick, okay? And it's going to use four cards, and you might notice something interesting about the four cards. That's right, they're all queens, right? And then you roll into the trick. You don't want to make such a move out of it. You don't want to draw so much attention to it. You want it to just be like a casual, just little display, right? You're just you're just showing the cards, and then that's it. You don't want to make like a big old thing out of it, because the more of a move you make out of it, the more heat and attention it draws to it. This is the same situation like when people are doing a color changing deck, right? So they have the cards, and then they'll do something like this. They'll be like, isn't it interesting how all of the faces of the cards are different, but all of the backs are the same, right? Isn't, isn't that weird? And you're thinking like, not really. That's like a standard deck of cards. They're all like that. And then they take the cards, right? And then um, they wave their hand over the cards, and then they change. And you're like, oh, didn't see that coming. I knew that something was going to happen with the backs because he drew attention to it, right? Instead of just being like, um, all right, so I have a deck of cards here. You can see all the cards are different. In just a minute, I'm going to shuffle through the cards at any time, okay? And you can, as I'm shuffling through the cards, you'll say stop. We'll point to a card and we can use it. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, we can use this one here or this one here. It doesn't matter. I want you to know that it's a completely free choice, okay? Sound good? All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and go into the move now. And then you go into the routine. So you're not drawing attention to the fact that the cards are all the same color on the back, but the spectators can see that. They can get it. You have... Uh, the black tuck box you have the maybe you at the beginning you take the two jokers out and you flash the backs of the jokers and you set them aside and those are black and then you know you're saying i'm going to shuffle up the cards just like this right and you could stop me there you could stop me there it doesn't matter Wh wherever you want to stop me and i'm like gesturing and i'm showing this right they're going to know that the cards are all black in their mind you don't have to go through this whole song and dance. I know I've talked about this before on my channel, but it is something that I still continue to see and something that still continues to bother me. So I just wanted to kind of uh, remind you guys that it's okay. You don't have to tell the spectator. Sometimes less is more, right? If you just show them as you're talking about the story or explaining what the selection process is gonna be. In a moment, I'm gonna do this and this and blah, blah, blah. And you're just casually showing the cards as you go through, then you're gonna have no problem with it. Uh, I saw at a lecture, Helder Gimaraz, uh, he talked about this. He does a trick where he shows the four aces and he puts the two red aces in like a wine glass and the other two red aces on the table and he wipes the handkerchief over it and then just switch and now the black aces are here and the red aces are here. And the way that that trick works is that there's like double face cards involved. Um, so he has to show that he's using just four cards, not five, and that all of the cards have backs. And guess how he does that? He just says, I wanna show you guys something with, with the four aces. And that's it, and then he goes into the trick, right? In some cases, you don't even have to do the frustration count. You just, I'm gonna show you a trick with four cards. And then you just go into it. You don't have to do this whole, look, there's the ace of spades. Notice it has a red back. There's the Ace of Diamonds. Notice it has a red back too. There's the Ace of Clubs and the Ace of Hearts. They all have red backs. Isn't that interesting? And you're like, no, that's not interesting. I already know that. I already know that they have red backs. It's a deck of cards. All the decks of cards have different faces and the same back throughout the whole deck. Like You don't have to explain that to the audience unless, of course, you were trying to hide something and the audience can pick up on that. So moral of this whole video is if you guys are going to use the frustration count or the Hindu shuffle uh, false back count force whatever you want to call it the Hindu shuffle force to show that all of the backs are the same or the swing cut uh subtlety where you're you know you're doing the same thing but you're doing uh as i'm trying not to throw the cards you're doing swing cuts right all of that stuff uh it's the same situation do not focus and draw attention on the fact that the backs look the same talk about something else and show that don't tell them just let them see it for themselves uh, even if it's on a subconscious level, they will pick up on the fact that all of the cards are 
black or blue or red or whatever color you want them to be. And then when you do the change, the change is going to come out of nowhere rather than anticipating that something's going to happen because you over explained it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, make sure to click the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell. That way you'll know every time I upload a new video. If you'd like to check out some more magic, visit us at obrienmagic.com and be sure to check out our online magic shop where you will find the latest and greatest magic books, downloads, and accessories.